Welcome to Aloha Church. My name is Stacia and I am a part of the team here at Aloha. We are so excited to be with you guys this morning, whether you are in your living room alone or maybe you've invited a few friends over since our country has deemed worship as essential. Woo! So fun. Um, I know our, our, our country is going through a wild time right now, but in the midst of a wild time, the fact that our country will say worship is essential makes me so happy and so proud to be in America. All right, you've heard about our Instagram bio. This is the link that captures everything. Anything that you ever need from Aloha, you can find there. If you want to take notes through Drew's sermon, that's where you can go. If you want to read along with us, we've got a reading plan you can read with Aloha Church as well as with your family. You can read along with us. And if you want to connect to us, that's where you can find our email updates, give your email, um, connect with us, and get all of the updates to stay in the loop. So remember, our Instagram link bio. You can literally find almost anything you'll ever need there. Aloha from the beginning has been such a generous church. It's been the heartbeat, the pulse. We always talk about random acts of aloha, and it's been so cool to see things still happening through this time. For me personally, I know I've mentioned this a million and one times, but Back in my Buffalo Wild Wings days when I'd get you know my tips and be like, oh, here's a 20, oh, I guess I'll tie this. When the moment that I switched it from a checkbox to a, I get to do this, I want to do this, I love that I have the opportunity to do this, it changed my life. Tithing has changed my life with getting to put my first fruits forward. And this is such a cool opportunity, uh, such a cool time with all of the, the unknowns and all of the question marks to still trust in Jesus and say, I know you've got this. I trust you with my money. I trust you with my first fruits. So if you consider Aloha Church your home church or you are prepared to give today, you can text my Aloha to 77977 or you can visit that famous Instagram link or you can check out our website at mylohachurch.com. We love you guys. We can't wait to be back on the lawn someday, hopefully soon, everyone together. And we've got Pastor Drew for you up next. All right, Allah on three. One, two, three. Good morning. Welcome to Aloha Church. My name is Drew Tevis. I'm the pastor of Aloha Church and welcome to summer. Man, summer's awesome. We've been in like a lockdown all summer, so I've been playing cards with my kids. I don't really love card tricks, but I'm trying to teach them some of my favorite games like blackjack, poker, go fish, 52 card pickup, whatever they are. I try to stick to my rules though. And my rule in blackjack is always double down. And for playing poker, I'm all in. Here's the deal. Sometimes you have to be willing to lose everything to win big and gain bragging rights. Am I right? But as pastor, I want to double down today on one of the most important names of God. We learned it last week. Do you remember? Abba, Father. Right. You can say it forward. You can say it backward. It's one of the most important names that we can learn as believers. Why? Because knowing God in the context of a loving father is the mission of the church. That's right. Knowing God in the context of a loving father is the very mission of why we exist. So my prayer as we double down on Abba Father that Aloha Church will bring people into an ever deepening loving relationship with God who is a loving father. With another lap around the track, we're gonna study again, loving father. So we're gonna go a little faster and pick up the pace so take your notes, buckle up, but let's pray first. Abba Father, 
loving God, I pray that Aloha Church would experience you, would have an ever-deepening, continued experience of you that we could enjoy and express you pouring love into our hearts as we study your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. So here's the first truth. We were created to know God. Number one, I'm taking notes. But knowing God is the highest boast of your life. Now, we may all have a lot of things we brag about or boast about, some of our accomplishments, right? But I love what Jeremiah says about boasting rights. He says this. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom or the powerful boast in their power or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. What do you boast about? Have you ever boasted on knowing the unfailing love of God that brings righteousness and justice? That's something to think about. He says we can boast, but let's boast in what the Lord says brings him favor. And that's our first truth. Number two is knowing God is worth losing everything in life for. Not just adding it to our already full life. It's worth losing our entire life for. And we can go all in. That's my game plan. All in, and I'm not bluffing, and we can go all in because we have nothing to lose. We only have a deep relationship with God to gain. Paul, I love Paul because he used the term Abba Father, right? Two times in the New Testament. He says this, yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else and counted it all as garbage so I can gain Christ and become one with him. Paul had an incredible spiritual resume. If you know, he was a Roman citizen. He had high degrees. He uh, persecuted Christians intently. Paul was the man right? Lots of education. He considered all that garbage. And if you look up the Greek word for garbage, it really just means poop. That's what he's saying. He said, I'm going to throw all that away in the toilet because it's worth nothing to me if I don't know Jesus. And this is, listen to what Paul says about being a religious superstar. He says, I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. He says this. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his own death. Again, Paul could submit his grade A plus spiritual resume, but he didn't. He counts it all rubbish. And then Paul doubles down. This is what Paul doubles down on. He says, I want to know the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Okay, that's cool because I want to double that, right? Double it, Lord. I want to know your power. Interesting, though, that Paul says, I also want to understand Jesus' suffering. (laughs) So his power and his suffering. Like, to be honest... I don't know if I want to double down on on experiencing Jesus' suffering. And Paul's saying, I'm willing to lose everything if I could just experience all that God has for me in his power and in his pain and in his suffering. Man, Paul was the man, right? I love Paul. And Paul, again, used Abba Father twice because he had that kind of relationship with his dad. Here's the big idea. Knowing God is worth losing everything. Amen? Number three, or two, I forgot, but taking notes so you don't mess it up, right? We were created to know God in the context of a loving father. And that's important. We were created to know God. I think everybody knows that. A lot of people study a lot of things about God. People have degrees about God. There's Bible classes about God. There's books about God. But we want to help you understand God in the context of him being a loving father, because this is the mission of Aloha Church, really. Life to the fullest means understanding God 
intimately, face to face as your daddy. John says this, Yet to all did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. We have permission as God's children to know our heavenly father. Amen. Again, this is the mission of the church to bring people into an ever deepening, loving relationship with the father. It's not to help you with the religious to-do list. It's not to help you um, uh, check, check off your attendance. It's to help you experience and express God as your loving father. I hope you're catching this. This is what Jesus said. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me, have loved them even as I have loved you. I kind of messed up on that last verse, but that's okay. It's all on the screen. Amen? The same benefits Jesus has with the Father, because the Father lives in Jesus and Jesus and the Father are one. As sons and daughters of God, we are one with Jesus. That means all believers are in the same family of God. We're brothers and sisters, and we can experience the same relationship with God as Jesus did. This is really huge. It's a relationship thing. It's not a religion thing. I think a lot of humans always turn relationship into religion. We take that face-to-face -face relationship with God. Adam and Eve did this, right? They put rules and then it becomes separated. And then when we feel like we attain God in our spiritual like checklist, we feel we earned it. This is so different. This is our sinful nature. God makes us righteous. God declares us holy, not because we are good, not because our conduct is because of God's character. And I love that theology. And that's really important. Not to get caught up if you're studying all about God and, and all these things, but when it, at the end of the day, is God your loving father? The same relationship Jesus and Paul had. And this is really huge. Just could this change my life? This is a big aha moment growing up in like a religious kind of a church system where to do the right things or don't do this, the to, the, 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 the to do not and to do list, right? I even stuttered as a kid too, so it brought back memories, you know what I mean? Just have a relationship with Jesus, that God loves me. He wants to hold me and he sees me for all my faults because he designed my life. And here's the deal. What should a relationship with God as my father bring into my life? Like, what are the benefits of knowing God as the loving father in my life? He's going to bring us some things. There's lots of things that he brings us. I just want to go over like three or four, okay? Love. God's love should overwhelm and overflow in our lives. For we know how dearly God loved us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. And that's out of Romans. Do you feel God's overwhelming love pouring into your life and pouring out of your life? And God's, God is love. So without having a deep relationship with love himself, how can we really love others? Love. Number two, an unshakable faith. Romans says this in verse 35. Can anything separate us from Christ's love? And then skip down to verse 38. It says this. I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from the love of God. God loves you, and that's the truth. You know, this might be like hard to hear, but it's true. It's blasphemous to say that God does not love me. It's not true. Satan, the father, lies will tell you God doesn't love you based on how you feel about yourself. God loves you. God is love himself. And he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. And he said, I love you so much, I'm willing to send my only son to die on the cross for you. That's how much God loves you. And that, that gives us unshakable faith, right? God loves every single person. He gives us unshakable faith. And number three, God gives us great hope. 
Hope is the expectation that something really good is going to happen. Like, it's going to be so awesome. Something good is going to happen. And here's what Paul says about hope and this eager expectation that he gives us. In 1 John, it says this, Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what he will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation, say eager expectation, eager expectation will keep themselves pure just as he is pure. Here's a question. Do you wake up every day with eager expectation that something is amazing is going to happen? Or do you wake up like waiting for the other shoe to drop? Like, man, something terrible is going to happen. I don't want to get out of bed. And then fear and anxiety and worries keep us in bed. That's not from God. Martin Luther said this, Most men have just enough religion to take the fun out of sinning, but not enough to bring them real joy. Man, does that sound like a lot of really like lame religious people that you know? Bitter, worried expectation. That is not what God has for us. That is not one of the benefits of knowing God. He gives us an eager expectation. A life with God our Father brings us this kind of joy. And again, this is the mission of the church. My prayer that you would have a deeper, loving, intimate relationship with God, your loving Father. And that you would experience and joy and then express an overwhelming amount of love pouring out into your heart. And then you to express hope and joy and live with this eager expectation that the Lord is doing things in your life. God is on the move. God is always doing things in your life. I'm excited every day. What is God going to do? I hear stories and God moving and I'm looking for God moving in the world. And that's what we want to help people to wait upon the Lord and then to watch what he's doing in your life and then to share with other people because God is doing really good, right? God intends the lives of believers to be a reflection and a reproduction of Jesus' own relationship with the Father. So today, we were created to know God in the context of a loving Father and that you would, would have an ever-deepening, loving, intimate relationship with God the Father. This love would pour into your heart, it pour into others' hearts. And then, reviewing, he would have this unshakable faith and you would enjoy and experience, express hope and joy. Again, this all pours out to like, this is only possible if you have a relationship with God. That God would you be in relationship, not the religion of doing things. Like Paul was in a religion, he said this is a relationship. And all you got to do is like, hey, let's say the simple prayer in the privacy of your own heart, as we always do. Say, dear Lord, come into my life. I invite you into my life. I want to have a deep relationship with you. I want to have an ever-deepening relationship with you. You pour love in my heart. You would overjoy, and I would eagerly expect you to move in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've been joining us, we want to connect with you at Aloha Church. Many ways to connect in our bio. You can DM us. You can get on our email list. And ultimately, the, one of the great ways that we're being the church is we are doing many churches. Many churches are churches with a few people welcoming to the home, having hospitality, gathering. This is how the gospel, this is how people in the New Testament actually helped others know God by getting to a smaller group of people around the table, taking your shoes off anytime. So you can watch this message anytime with your friends and then discuss uh, some of the, um, the, the questions. Those are just like starter questions just to prompt you to sort of start a fire and even the names of God there's hundreds of names of God we're just going over a couple maybe start with the ones that we learn and then look in the Bible or look in the holy Google even there's a whole bunch of names of God all to help you really understand God's character and nature because he loves you man thank you for joining us for Abba part two I love you guys see you next week aloha
chosen me love has called my name and I've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer a slave of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer. 